All right, what is going on guys? Today we got a little comparison. Going to be installing a Dynojet Power Commander 5, replacing that EJK tuner that is currently on the WR. Also doing an IMS three gallon fuel tank and probably an oil change, but the main, the main meat and potatoes of it is uh, that right there. We're gonna see if we can make this thing run better. I've got my fair share of gripes with the EJK. And according to the forums and Facebook and a lot of other places, a lot of other people do as well. And uh, it's not bad for the price, but we're going to see if we can make this thing run better today. For now, let's just rip it all apart and get to work. As you can see, we are well in the process here. Got the power commander mounted right up in there, just like the old... YouTube says to blow the headlight, get all my harness ran down the side behind the coolant reservoir and then up under the frame to mess the wires but essentially you just need your crank position sensor, ignition coil, fuel injector, throttle position sensor and those plugs that go in line of all those. To give the rating to the power commander and then there's fuel pump and fuel line get that big old tank on there get all the bracketry to mount it and whatnot sorted out and we should have a runner here soon all right and just like that she's back together i love the way this fuel tank looks Super sturdy on there, just a traditional dirt bike gas cap. And it's just noticeable enough, like the extra height just kind of looks neat, I guess, in my opinion. All right, I got my laptop set up in the truck there. About to plug in the power commander. We'll pour it right in there. First, I'm going to uh, switch it off that way the injector won't prime key on the power Looks like everything's still Anyway, see the cable ran to it now There's a noise for it I suppose Give me the app there we go All right Let's see, just for fun, throttle position. Wonder if it has to be running. It says device is ready. Let's reopen the app then. Maybe it does need to be running. Alright. Let's just open map. That's what I've told I need to be, need to do anyway. Open map. Next map is the one I'm using. If you're into the WR250 Facebook groups, chances are you've probably heard of this one. Send map. Send map. Hmm. Maybe asking too much of it. Oh, it's map sent. Okay. So now if I press get map. Open, let's do it again just for fun. Next map, send map. It can't be that easy. Let's try one time. Uh, switch on. No check engine lights or nothing crazy. Well, dang. It might just be. 
be that easy. <laughs> Alright, now that everything is buttoned up, going to take it for a little ride, come back, discuss what I think of the Dino Jet Power Commander versus the electronic jet kit or EJK based on or made by Dobeck Performance and then we will have a little sit down talk and kind of weigh the options on the two of them and see what we like better. All right, so it's been at least two weeks or more since I last made that last clip where I went for the ride and did my first ever ride with the the Power Commander 5 hooked up and tuned. So, I've actually rode quite a bit since then and uh, got to spend a lot more time with it, which isn't a bad thing. I just rode for longer than I intended to originally that day, which also isn't a bad thing. But uh, I've got a good feel for it now and I've got a really good feel for the EJK being that I spent almost I'd say 6,000, six or 7,000 miles or more with it hooked up to my WR and tuned, and tuned by me. I never had it on a dyno with anyone to help tune it. So, got a pretty good basis of each. I want to say that the, the EJK brand new right now in August of 2021 is about $270, and I think a Power Commander is about $350. So, quite the price, honestly, neither one of them is cheap for what they are, but there is quite the price gap there. And on in my personal experience with the WR250R, a 2019 with 8,000 miles on it now, uh, the Power Commander is by far superior, the tunability, I mean, well, not even the tunability, but just using a, a pre-made map on the Facebook group on a setup that's kind of similar to mine has the bike running far better than it ever did with the EJK. I mean, it is like 110% superior. And the EJK, you were always kind of guessing. Like, there was, like, recommended setups on their website, and it was good. But you were always chasing a bog. It seemed like it had random cutouts here and there. And it, it always seemed rich to me, I suppose, on their recommended settings. It always seemed a little rich. Not enough to make me want to mess with it because I figured I would get on the ch you know, chasing a never-ending circle of trying to make it run absolutely perfect. When I knew to run as well as it could, a power commander was essentially going to be needed. And, I mean, that it does now. I haven't had any cutouts. As long as the lock's warm, it doesn't bog at all. And the response, overall response is better. You feel it mainly in like second through fourth. Like I like the wheelie a lot. And then, so for wheelies, like, how, like coming up and down, using the foot brake a lot and trying to modulate. If you're trying to smooth out a wheelie and you just tap the foot brake just a bit too hard, this seems to have a little bit more pickup in like that second through fourth gear range, which is typically where I wheelie the bike. I'll either pick it up in second and shift the third or fourth and cruise it from there on out. And it's definitely got that cleaner, cleaner revving throughout the mid range and whatnot for that type of riding. And I'd say overall, I don't think it's any faster. I don't like, I've not seen like a higher top speed with the Power Commander on. But it does sound healthier up top, but like I, I think up top. The EJK, or a wide open throttle, a well tuned WR with an EJK on it is about as good as a Power Commander. But it's just that rideability. And if you were to take it to a, a person or a tuner that had a dyno and tuned WRs, I mean, they would certainly want a Power Commander because they can hook, you know, if they've got the Power Commander 5 app or if you've got the Power Commander 5 app on your laptop, you can bring that, the cable and just bring the bike and you would have everything they need essentially to tune or to pretty much, yeah, tune everything about the bike essentially except for uh, you can't adjust the rev limiter and there's a, a few 
other things. But that's like the nature of it. It's still a piggyback ECU. It's not like a swapping out an ECU. It's just, I guess, it literally kind of goes in between the stock Yamaha ECU and uh, each function that it has control over. So it's not fully comprehensive, but it's about as good as it gets for a WR. And it's really all that it needs. Like, you're not going to get much more than 30 horsepower out of, out of one, from what I've seen, no matter what you do. And honestly, modifying one at all is kind of silly. Like, you'll go from maybe 26, 27 to 30 at the wheel. Like, it's a lot of money for a couple horsepower. But if you're like me and you want the exhaust, you want the sound, and you want the look of it, and you want it to run well, the Power Commander is one of the best mods you can make for sure. So between the two of them, I know I've just rattled on about how great the Power Commander is. And I mean, honestly, I'd have to say it's the better ride. Like, the EJK is good, and if I had left my bike stock, I might have went with the EJK permanently. If I was just going stock exhaust, maybe get rid of the, the emission stuff, like the AIS, the little vacuum deal on the top of the airbox. I forget what it's called, but I've got that out. I don't have the X up on there anymore. So, all right. Well, if you had the stock exhaust, you'd have to leave the X up, I suppose. I'm not sure about that. Huh. Well, anyway. I'd highly recommend the Power Commander for like 90% of people out there, because most people are gonna want the exhaust. Most people are gonna wanna do what they call like stage one mods. And as far as like big boards and you know, stroke promoters and all that for WRs. I've seen people do, I think Athena makes a 290 kit, and then I've seen people do uh, 310s with the uh, Athena board, and with the Athena cylinder and piston, and then uh, stroker or crank uh, bump it up to like a 310. And at that point, I, mean, I feel like there's just better money to be spent, like sell the WR and buy a KTM 350 and get better suspension, get the better motor, you know, get all that stuff. But then again, it's still a ton of maintenance, but I feel like a WR is a ton of maintenance after you do a big bore and a stroker motor. But, I don't know, that's just me pondering. In all reality though, for, for stage one stuff, for like I said, 90 to 95% of WR owners, Power Commander is the way to go for about, we'll say 5% of that could do with the EJK. And then we'll say that the other 5% might just need to buy a different bike. <laughs> as bad as that sounds. Like, you're, like, everything on a WR is almost a performance part, but everything on a WR can also take a beating and do so on fairly normal maintenance, not like true dirt bike maintenance. Which is why I love it, why many, many people love it, and why they didn't change it for umpteen years, I would imagine. So. That's my take on it. I'm all about the Power Commander, especially now that I've got one. If I had never bought one, I definitely probably would have swayed my opinion, but trying them both, paying full price for each, and tuning both myself, like I can 110% say that the Power Commander is the way to go. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're into that. And if you want to see more stuff like this, it'll be here soon. Have a good day.